Good morning, good Sunday, everyone. Uh, I don't even know if everybody's going to say hi here because some people still don't know I came back, but I'm back from my long vacation in Brazil. Hi, hi, hi. Good morning. Who's there? Sheila. Good morning, Sheila. How are you? Oh, I miss this group so much. <clears throat> Maureen! So happy you're back and had a wonderful time, but we miss you terribly. Oh, I miss you guys way more, way more. Every Sunday I was like, oh, something's missing. Uh, I was, in my mind, I was sure that I was going to be able to teach. Uh, every Sunday because I wasn't basically doing nothing there guys seriously it was cold and I wanted to just to close up and and talk to you guys hi Jill hi oh well, thank you it's good to be back here in this group um, so yeah I was going to but then the internet it was always like going ups and downs and with a lot of people you know using the internet because this is all the kids do it's play and video game and use the internet everybody's using so i was really afraid to just keep like uh, dropping off all the time and plus this is gonna be kind of like my first full yoga practice i was doing a lot of meditation but actually i didn't do much because i injured my hamstring in my inner thigh a muscle that is connected because I was playing with my nephews and nieces and we're going down the hill the little one tried to do the same why I had someone in my back going down with the skateboard and then I needed to save her just stretching my leg to the right side and then the skateboard um, pull my leg all the way forward so it was it was a little tear and it was really painful but I rested, that's all I did. I rested and now I'm feeling much better. So we can start this and I'm super excited. I hope you guys had a wonderful summer. And if anyone wants to share anything, I would love to hear. Um, I hope you are going to share just good stuff. But if this the bad stuff is part of life, so let me know. Oh, hi Coco! Thank you so much. You're sitting in the car, you still can do the meditation part if the, the internet works. All right guys, let's start otherwise I would just chat the whole time, right? So finding a comfortable seated position. If you're there, it can be in a, on a chair, in your bed, in the car, wherever you're seated, okay? Let's just invite Invite your pure, beautiful selves to be connected and to be awake in this morning. All right, so we're going to bring the hands together and we're going to rub them and create a little warm sensation between the palms. And you can rub forward and back or you can do circles, whatever works for you. We're gonna do the invitation first in the belly, feeling the warm sensation of your hands in your belly and take a deep breath here. Another long breath in. One more towards the hands. Connect with your hands again and rub a little more. And don't stop the deep breaths. Keep on practicing deep, deep breathing. And I'll bring the hands to the chest. 
and it can be both hands like this or it can be one hand on top of the other it's whatever works for you and on the chest you're gonna see more action the chest is the chest is going to lift up you're gonna feel a rise okay and this is actually what I want you to feel rise and then on the exhale, fall, not up your spine, just a rise and a fall of your chest. So you rise with your inhale. Take another one. Now bring both hands to face the sky, palms facing the sky, hands down to your legs. And then take two deep breaths, imagining that your hands are still in your belly and your chest. One more. Bring your hands down now, palms are facing down. We're gonna do an exercise that is not actually a stretch, but is an action uh, release for the neck and the shoulders. So it's going to feel and look different of probably what you usually do, what we usually do. But is this training the nervous system to actually know exactly what a relaxed shoulder and neck should feel. So we're gonna start with the right shoulder. We're gonna slowly take 10 seconds to rise that right shoulder, but if you, when you have a chance in front of the mirror, see what is the height of your shoulders in comparison to your ears, see how long your neck can become so create that long spine first and then with the right shoulder we're going to slowly start to rise just the right not the left and we're not going to bend to one side you stay with your sit bones rooted down so as you lift slowly that right shoulder up taking your time maybe close your eyes you're not forcing with anything you're just acknowledging what's happening you're lifting and of course you, you need muscles to lift that, okay? Even your neck muscle needs to be engaged, that right side. So as when you lift as high as you can go, we're gonna stay here for 10 seconds, okay? So don't rush. And it's going to Give you different sensations. All right, three more seconds, two and one. Now we're gonna slowly lowering the shoulder, very slowly. Again, we're gonna take 10 seconds. And it's a very cool experience. Because between that time that you're going down, sometimes already feel like your shoulder is all the way down you're practicing what is engaging and letting go keep going i already feel that my shoulder is in the same height but i can see in my phone that is not so keep going keep going and then when you release then you're gonna feel that actually release all in the muscles take a nice breath in Exhale now out. Acknowledge that now both shoulders are at the same height again. And we're gonna do the other side. So take your time. Take your time. We're not doing anything all of a sudden. You're still breathing deeply. Keep 
keep your spine long try not to shrink your neck because this is usually what people try to do in this one mm, I'm losing my voice <clears throat> keep going a few more seconds here all right I think I lift all that my shoulder can do so take another deep breath relax that opposite shoulder completely and then let's breathe here for a few more seconds breathe in and out breathe in and out release your your fingers one more time breathe in and out now we're gonna slowly move down very slowly moving down and the mind is gonna try to rush you and then you're gonna say hey this is for the best of us so take slow very slow at least 10 seconds of slow rolling down you're gonna hit a stage and you're gonna feel like your shoulders are already there but it's not quite keep going keep going keep going ah, okay I release my let's take another deep breath here and exhale all right we're gonna bring our hands to the opposite elbows we're going to lift and again be gentle be kind and then here when you can go when your arms cannot pass any further I want you to squeeze your hands into your arms wherever you're touching your arms and then you're gonna try to pull yourself up almost like taking the shoulder blades away from the sockets and then we're gonna bend to the right just enough giving that left side a good nice stretch and then we're gonna reach to the other side and taking one rib cage at a time, it should feel really good. And then we bring it back. And if you're tensing your legs or your hips, bring some pillows. We're gonna do one more side. Bring some pillows underneath your legs, okay? To support your legs. Or sit in something higher too, that helps. All right, so two times here. And then we're gonna release. We're gonna release the right hand down to the floor. We're gonna reach the left arm all the way up. And then we're gonna bend the elbow. No, you're not gonna be able to see me. Bring your hand, your left hand behind your head and then press your head into your hand. Just what your arm can do, what your shoulder can do. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna bring the elbow in. We're gonna bring the face to look down almost like a twist okay so your head your hand is helping your head to move down and then one more time press your right hand on the floor press your head into your left hand and try to open your chest beautiful and then we kind of help ourselves come back up release the hand down take a nice breath in and then we're gonna roll the spine sinking into your sit bones really trying to puff the rib cage <laughs> the mid back and sinking in the rib cage and then we lift again okay now the left hand is going to go down to the floor we're going to raise the raise the right hand up reach it all the way bend that elbow a little bit and see where the arm can go if you can bend that elbow bring your hand to the back of your head and then press gently always gently your head into your hand see what your body can where your body can go from here taking another breath breathing to your um, armpits very important all the one of the glands of your our lymphatic system it's it's right there so it's good to think about breathing there okay now we're gonna do the opposite now we're gonna try to close the chest by lowering the elbow and then the hand is gonna pull the head down gently into the right shoulder blade 
And then we bring back to open one more time. Freeing that chest, lifting that elbow up. And then when you come back, you can hold your head and help the head come back so you're not using too much of your neck muscles. All right, reach the hands back, interlace your fingers all the way. I'm gonna move back actually so we can see who is there, who is there, who joined us. Good morning, Monica! It's so good to see you, my friend, so good. Not to see you, but to have you here. <laughs> I wish I could see you guys. All right, interlace the fingers, press them together, and open the heart, open the heart, open the heart. Oh, it feels good. Okay, now soften the neck and look down. Taking another breath. You can do some movement if it feels good. Side to side, very gently. So, as you notice, we're going from the neck to the shoulders to the arms slowly bringing all awareness down to the body okay now we're just gonna practice a little bit here on our waist we're gonna work in our digestive system and then we're gonna start to work in the hips on the knees and on the feet okay so bring your arms, we're not gonna do the cactus arms as usually I do this breathing. We're gonna just lowering a little bit and I want you to close your hands and keep your thumbs up and then you squeeze your thumbs and squeeze your fingers into your palms. If you have very long nails that can, cannot be very comfortable, so you just squeeze your fingers like this instead of like this. I like like this because I have very short nails. So I'm gonna squeeze my thumbs and then keep your elbows not really close to your body, but just a little further away. And then we're going to do just some movement here. Now, think about this movement not through the low back, but through that um, nice upper back doing the movement. Okay? So, of course, your waist and your low back is going to always move to your, your discs. But we're going to do this just this and we're trying to follow the movement with the breath so now as I ask you to squeeze your thumbs right into your palms into your fingers I meant we're going to also use this not just the breath but the open and the closer of your thumbs as the inhales and exhales go So you separate and then you squeeze them. I prefer usually through the nose, so try that. Five, three, two, and one. Bring the hands down, palms facing down. Take a time to close your eyes. Beautiful. All right, now we are awake in our spine, we are awake in our shoulders, our arms, our neck. Now we're gonna start with the full body. Hips first. So if you have in your head into your mats, if you're already there, bring your hands, palms, stretching your fingers, knees and hips, knees right underneath the hips. Press your hands down, all the knuckles down. Now let's swing the hips side to side. What, what does that mean? As you're looking down, is your pelvis that is moving side to side as you're looking towards your pelvis, okay? Between your inner thighs here. So moving side to side very gently, very gently. And then we're gonna do one more time here. Okay, as you are in the center, as you press your toes down, Lift your mid back all the way up so you're going to feel in your rib cage. You're going to give a nice um, awaken here through those areas of your body. From here, start to move your sit bones towards your heels. I have my toes tucked, so we're stretching the toes here now. And then sliding the hands all the way to the front. From here, guys, we're going to keep moving this way. So, um, 
Notice what your body is doing. Now, as your hands, your arms are all the way stretched, your toes are still tucked, you're going to lift your butt as you slide in your hands forward. Lower your elbows on the mat and then start to move by rounding your back, rounding your back, coming forward, sliding your knees back if you need to, and then coming all the way down to your belly. Slide your hands towards your rib cage underneath your shoulders, lifting your chest. Exhale, lowering your chest. One more time, inhale. Now use your arm strength to come back up. Just walk your knees a little closer to you, back to that tabletop. Exhale, pressing your hands down, rounding the back, looking towards your sacrum, towards your pubic bone, tucking your toes, reaching your sit bones back to your heels, and then here, start to slide your hands forward, reaching forward, reaching forward. When you cannot go any further, now you're gonna start to rise your butt away from your heels, lower your forearms down, exhale, round your back, slide your knees back. Sometimes it's normal if you find what we just did, finding some cramping in the front hip, it's okay. R sliding the hands underneath, lifting the chest. Now we're gonna do just one time, exhale, coming back, tucking the toes. Now we're gonna reach back to a child's pose with the toes tucked, sliding your forearms towards you. And then as you press your forearms, really round your upper back and bring your chin really close to your chest. Take a nice breath to sitting in your toes. Yes, you will feel your toes because that's what we're trying to get, okay? From this pose, just rise your, your butt off and bring the top of your head down to the floor. I have a, a bunion in there, so. And then interlace your fingers and rise your knuckles up to the sky, trying to keep that, those arms straight. Another release for the neck. Taking another breath here. Exhale, lower your hands towards the sides of your head, lift your head, take a deep breath in. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna slide the left knee more to the right side. So the left knee should be more towards the right side of your mat, okay? Now, straight your right leg all the way to the right side. Let me come a little closer so you can see. Now the inner foot is down on the floor. I want you to engage that leg so it straights the whole leg feeling the energy rising up towards your hips. Now, left hand stays not at the same level as the knee, so a little further to the left. So tuck your left toes under, press your left knee. Now, what we're gonna do with the pelvis, the pelvis are gonna move to the right, it's going to move to the right. So you're gonna feel more of the sink of the left knee and the lift of the right side and the lowering of the left side the right side and the lower and the left side. Now take the right arm up and open as much as it feels good. Freeing that arm. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're going to lift our toes up to the sky, the right foot, then lower all the way down to the floor. It doesn't matter which angle it is. Now bring your right hand down and trying to slide the right foot further away. What are you gonna need to do to be safe in this one? I want you to slide your left foot in more, okay? So you create more uh, points of balance. And you keep sliding until you can any further. Please be safe in your inner thigh and your hamstring. And then when you found the space that you're like, okay, I can feel it but I can breathe and I can release my butt down to my back heel or towards something. Take a nice breath. Now try to point your toe so it opens the front of your foot too. One more breath. This is really hard for me. This is where I, I tear. I tear something in Brazil. Plain, plain. 
We didn't hear, you can hear the lady in the beginning what happened. So I'm gonna step my right foot forward. Now, same leg. Now you should be able to use your blocks here in both hands. So my both hands are inside of my foot. We're gonna try to just slowly puff that upper back to try to straight a little more of the right leg. And then we bend again, sinking into the hips. And then we reach back, straight that leg, sending the butt back, rising that upper back. And then one more time. We bend, we sink, we breathe. Awesome job. We're gonna slide that right foot back. Now both knees are gonna come close together, tucking the toes again, lowering your forearms down, and then finding a different child's pose. Forehead can be on the ground. Take it easy as you surrender your muscles, your bones. Deep breath in and out. Are you relaxing your lips enough, your face enough, your eyes enough? Press your hands, we're gonna lift, come back up. Now I'm gonna turn the other way, so I'm gonna do the other leg so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so palms down, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. Now slide your right leg towards the center line. Before we do the left, now we're gonna do the right. Take a deep breath in and then pick up that leg Foot, the inner foot is on the ground, and then you're gonna slide not too much, just enough so you feel a little bit in your inner thigh. Now, the movement of the hips, what happens? So if your hip bones are facing the floor, I want your left hip bone to rise more, and the right lowers towards the knee, okay? Now the left hand's gonna go up, and you're gonna see how much space you have in that chest, in that shoulder. Breathe in and out. As we bring the hand down gently, sliding that foot, lift your toes, bring it down, slide it away from you, slide your right foot in to say to be safe with the knee. And if you want to go down into your forearms, please feel free. Now you know what to do on the other side. So my left leg is straight onto the left side. And if the floor is too far for you, for you, just keep into the hands or bring your blocks to help you out. Taking one more inhale. Oh, my inner thighs needed this. Relax through the shoulders. All right, guys, we bring the hands back towards the ground. We slide the leg back and then Bring that right foot off, off course, normal. And then we're gonna step the left foot forward. Using the blocks I recommend, both hands in the, in, in the inside. Now we're gonna reach back very gently and the reaching back, remember because if you have really tight hamstrings like I have uh, right now, we're going to puff that upper back, really finding space between those shoulder blades. And then we come back down, we sink into the hips. And then we reach back again, take a deep breath out. And one more time, we go forward. Slide that leg back. Now oh, guys, I'm sorry that I didn't ask you if you have props around. The next um, position that I want to work with you is having your bolster pillows. You all know the drill. If you have pillows, bring two pillows. I think it would be the best. Or you can use your two blocks, um, not stacked but one in front of the other. Oh, it could be stacked too. 
or you can use your uh, blocks for something else. If you have a, a blanket, you can use a blanket too, folded blanket. So what we're gonna do is separate the knees just like if we're going towards a frog pose, but this frog pose, our feet are not gonna be separate. Our feet are gonna be a little closer together, okay? Just like going towards a child's pose, but our hips and knees are gonna be level. So this is going to uh, depend of what you have as props. So what I'm gonna do for me is to bring one block, one block underneath my, my my pillow here. So as I separate my legs, now my pubic bone is right there. It's connected and I'm supported. Every time we are stretching without the tension of the stretch, it's easier to release, okay? So this is why we do restorative practice. So I'm gonna lower my forearm down. I can use my other block to support my chest. I can use a blanket or I can go down with my forehead. Now, another problem with this kind of position is if your knees start to feel not very comfortable, especially if you have any issues, like actually the friction of the floor, the hardness of the floor with the bone of your inner knee cannot be very comfortable. So this is a moment that a blanket or a small or thin pillow would really help out so you can bring underneath that knee now we're going to stay here for a few breaths and use that prop that you have underneath you especially supporting your belly to really express the breathing okay as you breathe in you pressing the belly into the pillow as you breathe out you release the whole weight of your belly and your back into the pillow. Now, if you can, if it's something that's suitable for you, you can try to start to separate your feet and bring the inner foot, the inner foot should be down on the floor, just like the inner knees. But if your inner knees are not on the floor, your foot is doing this, it should not feel very good in your legs, in your um, joints. So you can keep where you were before, how you were before. And then we're gonna just take a few more moments here. Another breath. All right, you can either stay here with the legs if it's very comfortable place for you or you can kind of straight a little bit the legs okay so it feels more comfortable in your hips so it's also up to you now I'm hoping that all of you have something underneath your belly to support underneath your pubic bone to support you blankets pillows whatever because this next one we're gonna do the cross with the arms we're gonna open the shoulders a little more I have my right cross over my left, and then I'm gonna walk them away from me, and I'm gonna use my block. So sorry, guys, you probably cannot see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna use my block right in front to support my forehead. So I have my arms crossed. And then I can either stay here or if you know what, I have this space to go all the way down. So the problem with this one is sometimes you feel the choking sensation of your arm into your neck is going to depend on your neck length, your torso length, and all of this. And of course your flexibility, so. Now we're gonna undo and just do the other side. We're not staying here for long because we kind of already did some shoulder opening. And one more breath. Awesomeness. 
If you can still stay seated in your rise pillows, that would be great for the next thing that we're gonna do before our Shavasana. Okay, so I have my knees bent. You don't have to, you can stretch your legs. You can sit um, uh, cross-legged if you prefer. Or you can use also one or you two blocks to do this or to sit on. Now, my fingers are gonna go back and I'm gonna try to touch something. It can be your blocks, it can be a chair, it can be a, a one of your pillows like I have here. So fingertips pressing, close your eyes, notice your spine. When I say notice your spine, is a conjunction between the two sit bones and the spine going and rising up. So notice your spine, press your fingers down and start to move your chest up. I'm not asking you to move your tailbone back. I'm asking you to move your chest, chest up, chest up. Yes, you're going to feel in your shoulders. As your chest is going up, I want you to bring your elbows closer together. Automatically, your shoulder blades are going to start to get closer together. And then maybe look up, rise in your gaze up, or maybe not, keep your chin down. Nice breath in, nice breath out. One more breath. Now for the ones that wants and knows that can go a little deeper, you can drop your whole hand down towards your prop behind you and just try to lift a little bit your butt, squeezing and tucking the tailbone under, lifting your butt so you can get more of that hip and hip flexor. And then exhale, lowering down. All right. So, oh, feels like I swallow a hair. So, I'm going around my, my prop here and we're gonna use it. I'm going to use it for my Shavasana. Not necessarily you need to use for your Shavasana, okay? So, I'm gonna go down until my butt touch the floor. Because I have one uh, block, right in the middle so what's going to do as i'm going back is going to rise my chest but my head's going to go lower so if you prefer the opposite so your chest is lower your head is higher you bring that block more towards the edge towards the back of your pillow okay so what i'm going to do here is just to use a little blanket to keep my feet and my belly warm I will keep my legs crossed. You don't have to, you can stretch, you can bring even more pillows underneath your knees if you're having uh, low back issues. Now I'm gonna lower my head down. My chest is going to be lifted. Guys, the most important part of Shavasana is that you find what your body needs to completely take help, take the tension away from the body. And I'm almost positive that you all know what does that mean. When you find that support, that's why we use props. Finding support that can just hold you in a perfect way this is when you're like, ah, now I can relax. Right now, for me, it's not the best pose. What would be the best for me? My arms raised a little bit more. In an, an ideal world, I would have two other bolsters holding my uh, arms and holding my legs, maybe straight, having something underneath, having more blocks to support my legs. So you're in your home, you can find some more things to support you. And what we cannot do in any Shavasana is trying to rush, okay? Of course, if you would have something to do, 
right after this or you wouldn't be practicing so take your time even if your time is only five minutes take your time to really fully be present in this in this practice in this position in this shavasana what i always like to ask you to remind you of to remind myself of because it's so easy to go towards the negativity it's so easy to go towards the things that you are afraid or you are not looking for right it's so easy for our brain to not enjoy consequently our brain is not enjoying our body is not enjoying our soul is not enjoying so it's easy for us to go in the future already dreading something that's going to happen next so what happens we stop living because if we're living towards something that is not there yet we're not fully awake so right now this is what you are living and this is where you should bring your gratitude so focus on this moment your moment the moment that you're not serving anyone the moment that you're not teaching anyone the moment that you're not working for anyone this is your moment that you are aware and connected and purely finding feeling being love Gratitude towards every breath. Gratitude towards every bone. Gratitude about what you are, what you have, not materially, material, but what you have. You have your hands, you have your feet, you have your voice, you have your eyes. That we usually take for granted. I always try to tell the kids seeing things in a different eye. It's what changes, it's what flips the world. Sometimes the world is upside down, and when we flip just the way we look at things. World come back to not being so much upside down. Letting the head and the legs feel heavy. In your fingers and your palms, the front and the back of your hands, the shoulders. body is now trying to melt into a hard, not a hard, trying to melt into a very heavy metal. Separating your lips, relaxing your tongue, the cheek muscles, your eyes, the back of your mouth the top of your tongue. Let the breath be neutral. And if some days are not easy days, for a lot of people, for myself, especially during my teenager years when I needed to wake up so early, so I needed to go to bed so early, and start my week away from my family. 
It's not an easy day. But it can be amazing if you are present. It can be amazing. Take one moment at a time. Take one breath at a time every day. Life starts to become meaningful. It's always a pleasure being with you, my lovely people. I'm so glad to be joining in this group again. And hopefully now, from now on, I can, if you guys are doing outside workouts, we can do maybe a yoga, a yoga out, a yoga sculpt, or some kind of yoga. Stay here for as long as your body needs. Be kind to yourself, have gratitude, and I'm so grateful for you. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>